What up African family and welcome to another video of African history, culture, and worldview. And welcome back to my series African Myth and Legend 101 where I tell various stories from African myth and legend. Today, we're going to tell a myth from ancient Egypt about the struggle between Haru and Set. And as always, don't forget to support the home team on Patreon.com and go to Afrographics.com, a website where you can get helpful illustrative infographics summarizing African history. Links to Patreon and Afrographics are in the description box below. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. The death of Osar is a well-known mythological story. His brother, Set, grew jealous of his power and his popularity and planned to kill him. He crafted a coffin made for his brother, which he produced at a feast. He invited all the guests to see whom the coffin might fit. When Osar laid in it, Set and his helpers fastened the lid shut and threw it into the Nile. Osset, the wife of Osar, searched for her husband for quite some time and found the coffin where it had come to rest, near the town of Abydos. After some discussion, the gods agreed to send a message to Neith, goddess of the sky, asking her judgment. Thought, the scribe, drafted and wrote out the letter. Neith's reply was that Haru should receive the realm of his father. A tomb refused to recognize this reply as valid and refused to consent to Haru's enthronement. The discussion continued, and Osset began to lose her temper. The gods decided to continue their talk in a place without her, and withdrew to an island in the Nile. But Osset, ever resourceful, changed her appearance, bribed the boatmen, and so came into the island. There, she took the appearance of a beautiful young woman and walked past Set as he sat by the riverbank. Set walked with her for some time, drawn by her beauty, and they talked, and they talked. She told him she was a young widow. Her husband had died, and she had a small son. But the son could not get his father's cattle and fields, because a stranger had come into the village and claimed that those possessions were his by right. How can a stranger claim a father's property while the son yet lives? Axe Set, drawn into her story. Indeed, said Alset. She resumed her own appearance and called the other gods to witness that Set had spoken a judgment against himself. But again, Set disputed the decision and claimed that the circumstances of the two cases were entirely different. Finally, the gods decided that the two contenders should meet in combat. After some negotiations, Set and Haru took the form of hippopotamuses to fight in the river. The gods assembled and watched as the two mighty beasts roared and rolled in the water, slashing with their tusks and attempting to drown each other. All Set, meanwhile, watched anxiously, armed with a harpoon, for she was determined that her son would not lose this battle. But it was difficult to tell the two hippos apart, especially as they rolled over each other in the foaming water. One of them seemed to be winning, and although she was not certain, she thought it was set. The harpoon darted out and pierced the thick hide, but it was Haru, not set, and he bellowed in pain and reproached her as she hastily removed the harpoon and did what she could to quickly heal the wound. She watched closely again, and then stabbed. This time, she caught Set. She pulled him close to her, and he turned and spoke, reminding her that she was his sister and should not be guilty of his blood. Swayed, she released him, and he returned to combat. But Haru was tired of his mother's interference, so he left, rushed into the wilderness, and fell asleep. Set, following his trail, came upon him as he slept and blinded him. But the next day, as Haru wandered aimlessly, unable to find his way, the sometimes merciful Hathor came to him and poured milk in his eyes and restored his vision. Haru returned to the gods and resumed his suit against Set. The gods determined that they must consult a final authority and sent a letter to Osar, who had become the ruler of the underworld the land of the dead. 
Asar's reply was decisive. If they do not grant the inheritance to my son, he would return from the land of the dead with his host of dead spirits, and there will be no peace for the living. So Haru became the ruler of Egypt after Asar. Well, I'm all out, guys. If you like these videos and want to help out in its continued production, you can do so on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace.